Ladies and gentlemen, this week's special guest is Snowmo! You gotta be kidding me! Ow! Ow! A little diet ginger ale. This is Rick Castellano. Bigger than 10, stronger than 20. Some people like me. Some people don't. Some people know who I am. And some people don't. You think I care? Rick Castellano Show. Channel 18, late nights. Here's a little sample of what you're going to be seeing. How you doing, folks? Excuse me, I have a little ginger ale. Diet ginger ale. All right, let me tell you a little bit about myself. One, I'm not politically correct. So if you're watching and you expect that, turn the channel. I tell it like it is. My opinion all the time. And I won't just give you my opinion. I'll base it on fact. Most of the time. Mo no, I'll, I'll base it on fact. I'm going to give you a fair opinion, an intelligent opinion, whether you like it or not. All right, number one. Robert Blake, let's see. I left my gun in the restaurant. I went out and I came out and my wife was shot in the head. He did it! Spectre, big record dealer. Got a haircut that Don King would be proud of. I don't know his barber should have been shot for that cut, but anyways, he did it! O.J. Simpson, always liked O.J. Buffalo, good running back. You know, airplane. He did it! I never owned Bruno Molly shoes. Well, the guy wore them in the Super Bowl, and you morons didn't think of checking. But then after the trial, when the gloves didn't fit, of course, I, I, could, I could try put on a pair of shoes like a woman and trying to get in a size 5 when you're a size 12 and pretend it doesn't fit or it does fit, whatever you want to do. The guy did it. I don't care, black, white, green, purple, all the evidence showed he did it. I don't care, and I like the guy. He's guilty. I tell it like it is. Plain and simple. He didn't own the shoes, he did. He lied. All right. He's in the Bronco with a gun in his mouth, ready to blow his brains out, and then all of a sudden he hires all lawyers, and he comes up with all kinds of ideas. He did. He did. Plain and simple. Okay? Now. Let's talk about a few other things. Um, what's next? <laughs> Global warming? A farce? Wait a minute, excuse me. <laughs> a farce! You telling me some big, fat, bloated pig, Al Gore, the guy, luckily, he hid in Clinton, Clinton's shadows. He didn't do nothing. Eating Twinkies. Now he's all of a sudden, he just, he's a science professor. He's, he, he's an environmentalist. He's, he's got all these degrees that he didn't get. Global warming. Well, folks, two years, two simple facts. The two hottest years in modern recorded history are, are prior to World War II. Wait a minute. It's getting hotter, but the two hottest years in recorded history are prior to World War II. El Gore, go make more money doing stuff that you never did. The guy was making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, and now he's got a hundred million bucks. He pushed this global warming propaganda. You know, folks, we can debate it all you want, but it's debatable. I think it's a farce. I know it's a farce. It'd be in the Bible if it was true. But anyways... El Gore's global warming is a bunch of poppycock. Climate change, 
Some winters are hot, some are cold. I don't want no fat, smelly, bloated pig telling me something. The guy, all of a sudden, from a politician, becomes a science professor and has got 100 years of service. And not only that, if it was so true and so unfailable, why did all these professors lie and try to bake, cook, whatever you want to say, the records to try to make it in their favor? Farce. Debatable, at least. Now, this border? Control the border, okay, oh, yo, well, you're racist, you're this, you're that, legal aliens, oh, you can't do this racial profile. Folks, plain and simple, one, the southern border of Mexico, they got big towers or guys with machine guns keeping the guys out. But on our side, the northern border where the United States is, Walk back and forth. You know, you know. Granted, there's a lot of people who want to come here for work. Hardworking people. I, I won't debate that. But there's also criminals. There's also gang members. There's also rapists. People are getting raped and killed. Okay. Why do you think people have borders? Let them try to sneak over the border when they had the Berlin Wall. They would have been chopped liver at best, or maybe Swiss cheese. But anyways, we're the only country, big country, big military country. That we're going to, oh, we shouldn't do this. Put a wall up, control the border, let people come in here legally. My ancestors had to do it. My grandmother had to change her name from Tommaso to Thomas to get in here. You know why? She wanted to get a job. She had a bend. I'm not saying that's fair or that's right. But in order to get a job, she had to change her name from an Italian name. Because that Kodak, Eastman Kodak... If you were Italian back though in those days, you're not getting in. Folks, just part of history. Everybody had to live through it. The Irish, the Chinese, people from from generation to generation had to put up with it. I'm not saying it's fair, but folks, life isn't fair. If it was, I'd be a millionaire smoking big fat cigars, burping with stains in my shirt. Instead of here, I'm doing a 50 cent TV show, talking to you guys. Uh, Trying to be, I'm not politically correct, so it's not going to happen. All right, anyway, so legal aliens will do the jobs that nobody else will. Well, again, going back to my family, my uncles and stuff had to pick cherries in the summertime to feed their family. You know why? Because you either work or you don't eat. Now, when they say they do jobs again, like, but nobody else will, folks, it might be fine right now the way it is, and I don't think it's fair. I think, you know, some of this stuff is slave labor. But if you decide you give them amnesty and you give them jobs, they're going to get minimum wage. Then anybody's going to do the job, or a lot more people. So don't try to push this politically correct stuff down my throat because I'm not dumb. I'm not a moron. I'm street smart. I'm from the streets. Back from the streets, Iran, Iraq, I've been there. Now, on to phase two. Three, four, I don't know. I don't know where I am. It's a ginger ale. Give me another sip while I'm at it. All right. Affirmative action. It hits, it hits its time, but the time's passed, folks. Reverse discrimination. I'm a victim of it. True story. Um, about in the 90s, early 90s, I tried to get a job on the Rochester Fire Department. You know what? Castellano did something that he don't normally do for schooling, for normal things. I mean, it's a fight or something. I'm ready. I give my full, full effort. I studied my butt off. I studied and studied. I took old test, new test, past test, other states test. Five, six hours a night, I took the test every night. Everybody else is out there doing what they gotta do. I was gonna say a lot of things, but I can't say them now. But anyways, I studied. You know what, it paid off. I did good, consistently did good on the test. And then when I time to come time to take the test, 94, I get a letter in the mail. Mr. Castellano, you were in the top 
15 people, congratulations, job well done. I'm all excited. Hard work pays off, studying pays off. I'm gonna study more often, I'm gonna do things. It works. Then, about a month later, I get another letter in the mail. Mr. Castellano, congratulations. Due to such and such versus such and such, whatever, I don't know what kind of hogwash you're pulling. You were in the top 300 people. Well, easily known fact, there was a curve back then. So people with an 84 now had the same score as me as 94 that I earned from hard work. I studied. I didn't go out and party and dance and do the leprechaun, whatever. I got a legitimate 94. But people... Maybe they study, but they didn't get a good grade as I do. Like, the higher the best. They got 84s, the 84 was my 94. Never got hired. Now, you know, I wrote letters to Louis Slaughter, Maxis, Childers, Brown, or who knows what, big derbies. Did all this stuff. I never got answered by the letters, too. I got the letters. Never answer me back. I donated money to this, that. Tried to get a job because I wanted to do it on my own didn't happen. I took the test again. Now, I study my butt off again. Now, I studied sometimes with a, uh, a young girl at the time. She's very bright, good person. We studied. I said, you know, you might as well try to get on the fire department because they push for the minority, uh, whatever, to get on there. She studied. She's, she's smart. I can't take nothing away from her. But we got the same grade on the test. Similar grade, same grade, but on the agility and all that stuff, I blew everybody away, not just her, everybody in the city of Rochester. I crushed, had to go through tunnels, set the course record. I barreled her, I almost broke the thing. All carrying dummies upstairs, throwing them out windows, doing everything I had to do, but you know what? They decided to make it easier so women and, you know, whatever, could pass. And it passed fail. So I go through the tunnel in seven seconds, and uh, somebody else goes through it in two minutes. It's the same thing. It's not, let's hire the best. Hey, this guy is super fast, super strong, super quick. Let's see. I'll give you an example. There's a fire on the sixth floor. During a fire, you don't use the elevators because there might be a fire in, in the shaft, whatever, so don't use it. You gotta run up the stairs. Now, you have somebody like me that could run up the stairs and boot the door down, splinter the crap out of the thing, bust through, throw somebody on my shoulder, and run down quick, under two minutes, whatever, three minutes, and carry them out before the building explodes, or you could have some uh, young lady, might be strong, but young lady, could go run up the stairs, you know, four minutes later, um, try to bust the door down with an ax, finally get through, and start to go downstairs and the building explodes. But, folks, never mind facts, pass fail on the test, we both get a pass fail. So, we both get passed, but my time blows them away. Not just her, all the guys do. And, I don't get hired again. So affirmative action didn't work for me. And I experienced it, folks. I should be a little bitter. I experienced it and reverse discrimination. And I'm not racist. I, I tried. I wanted to be a fireman. I'm glad I'm not now. But at the time I did. And I tried and I didn't get the job. Six years of my life wasted. Fact, not fiction. Now. Some people say I'm higher than the president. I, I, I tried to like the guy, half black, half white. He was going to be changed. He's going to do all this. He's going to help everybody. He's going to. He's not this. He's not that. Folks, he got in the office. He just did his agenda. People say oh, you're a racist for not liking him. No, I'm not. I see what he did, and I seen all the money he spent, and I seen the church he stood in, and I seen how he acted to some of his friends, and I just realized. That He's not an honest guy. So people say, Rick, you're a racist. I'm not a racist. It's the white half I don't like. 
You're watching a Rick Castellano show. Excuse me, sir. Who'd you vote for last election? Barack Obama. And can I have your name, sir? Why do you think I'm wearing this to size? Yeah, I bet you a lot of people feel like that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Castellano is thinking about running for president in 2012. Well, let's ask him a few questions. Sir, what do you think about them building a mosque in New York City? No way. All right. What about the Mexican border? Set in the guard. Sounds good. And how are you going to create jobs, Mr. Castellano? Cut taxes. Hello, Mr. Obama. I have two special guests here. And what's your name, sir? Brandon. And what's your name? Brandon. Kyle. Your name's Kyle. Yeah. And would you like to say anything to the president? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? Hello, Mr. Obama. Hi, Obama. Hi, Mr. Obama. And it's his birthday. He's brighter than you. So, Brandon, what do you think about them electing the first black president? Half black. That's right, half black. So, what do you think about them re-electing President Obama? No way. No, no way. way. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching other... Excuse me. Let me tell you something. Oh! 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 I hope you learned this lesson. And now you're watching the Tommy Catalano Show. Oh, you're taking over.